World Breastfeeding Week 2023, enabling breastfeeding, making a difference for working parents. Breastfeeding, the basics, that's what we're uh, discussing this morning as it's the Breastfeeding Week 2023. And of course, I said earlier that we'll be having a guest and definitely a medical practitioner is here with us in person of Dr. Amadu, um, Amadu Mary. She's a medical personnel com public relations officer who has voluntarily contributed immensely to the development of communities in Lagos State. She has been a voluntarily rendering free medical support systems to people in the communities of Alimosho, Yaba, Aja and Lagos environs. She has also been a volunteer doctor at schools in Lagos State and has been given, uh, given free medical aids to students, teachers and parents as well as being involved in giving um, several support systems to injured persons during the NSARS protests. She currently is involved in rendering free health care services to many sickle cell organizations and other NGOs and the innovative and creative initiative Street Hospital, a project which takes medical care from the street to streets, churches, mosques and joints, offering free community services. She is live here with us in the studio. Thank you very much for being our guest this uh, beautiful morning. I mean, the first day of the Breastfeeding Week. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mary, for being our guest today. Thank you so much for having <laughs> me. It's a pleasure. Yes. All right. So let's go straight into um, the breastfeeding conversation here. Now, during feeding, does uh, breast milk undergo changes? Because we've had a lot of, we've already discussed a couple of did you know facts as regards breastfeeding. And then this is a very important one. Does it change from time to time? And if it does, how does it happen? Oh, well, um, thank you once again for having me on the show. It's yes. a pleasure. Yes, um, there are changes um, when there was a breastfeeding. Um, first of all, the same burst that comes out within the first um, week, it's not the same as the second mm -hmm. and the third, and that it progresses. So the first week of um, breastfeeding, we have what we call the colostrum. So the colostrum is the first uh, milk that comes out, very healthy, and um, a necessity for the children. And we always encourage mothers to ensure that they breastfeed their babies mm -hmm. um, almost immediately once they start, uh, once the baby's out and they have rested from the delivery. And from the colostrum, we have what we call the transitional breast milk. Mm. That's the second stage of breastfeeding. So when we go from the transitional breast stage, that goes into like the second, the third week. And then by the month, by a month, we have what we call the mature breast milk. So in all, we have four stages of um, breastfeeding. Wow. Yeah, and the breast changes, the breast milk changes from one stage to the other to the third stage, yes. Mm. Speaking of changes, now there's something I heard as regards um, what the mother ingests in a system. Does it, for example, if she's having a lot of carrot juice, the baby is going to have a hint of that, isn't it? <laughs> how true, how true is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, that, that's very true. We always um, encourage um, breastfeeding mothers to stay away from things like um, caffeine, to stay away from things like garlic, and um, to ensure that uh, most of the time um, they don't take things that hurt the baby. Um, the baby may find it difficult to digest some of those things, excrete them out. So we always encourage mothers not to. And with each of the stages, the nutrients develop more, mm -hmm. so the baby gets more developed with each stage of the breastfeeding. Mm. All right, that's great. Now, as we get, uh, you know, giving your child breast milk, people, there are, there are concerns that the breasts, you know, changes in size from pregnancy and even while breastfeeding, of course, the boobs grow bigger. However, but there are some people who are small statured and their busts really don't increase in size. Is there any peculiarities as regards that? Yes, there are peculiarities. Um, it has to do with the um, estrogen level in each um, woman. Okay. So the same thing that um, happens when um, women um, put to, um, um, get pregnant and you find that um, even when they're put to bed and they're having their babies, you find that most of the time they're actually um, being developed. So it depends on the estrogen level of each human and that's genetic as well. So we have what, uh, we have the prolactin, we have the oxytoc uh, oxytocin and we have the estrogen. So each of these actually causes the increase. But you find out that in uh, women that um, generally tend to have a higher metabolic mm -hmm. um, rate, yes, they may maintain their slim stature, but there will definitely be some increase 
in the size of the breast. So that's no matter how small we will see changes in the breast and um, it will just be, just no matter how small it is. Yes, there. yes, th there must be some uh, volumetric um, increase. Um, the volumetric increase will be there because um, the breast will be filled, the breast will be saturated, so it cannot be the same. So it will definitely be, there will definitely be an increase. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, so for new moms and even um, existing moms who have already had several children, there are also concerns of how to naturally increase uh, milk production. How, how does that work? Because me, I have heard that, you know, people take pap as a way of boosting um, milk production. What natural ways can women breastfeeding mothers now um, go through or practice to ensure that they have um, breast milk in excess? Well, um, in the hospital, we do encourage medically for uh, women that are breastfeeding to take hot fluids. Okay. Um, so I think that's where the pap <laughs> actually came from. So not necessarily the pap. They can take um, hot foods. Okay. They can take um, hot liquids. Um, they can take um, things that have a lot of electrolytes. We have all that um, enhancing the flow of the, um, the breast milk. And uh, more importantly, too, um, they can also try um, the massage, which helps the flow in the body system, and especially the breast, you know, mm -hmm. that helps a lot, you know, the massage with oil, and then you find that the mm -hmm. milk flows more. All right, that's great. Now, for new moms again, who um, have engorgement, who feel like soreness in the breast, what are the factors, and how can it be managed? Well, like I, I said earlier, on the, um, we, the body differs, mm -hmm. and um, each woman differs from uh, another. So for those that the breast get engorged, well, naturally it is supposed to be <laughs> engorged because it's supposed to be producing. The, the pipes are supposed to be, fi uh, to be free, so it's supposed to be refilling itself mm -hmm. you know, through the body hormones. So there's supposed to be an engorgement, but when it becomes painful, then uh, it becomes an issue. And the doctors um, actually look into that. And what we actually do actually is a massage. And so we have some other um, ointments that we recommend in the hospital that the mothers can take. And then a little, um, not the mild um, anesthetics, you know, pain relievers, but not anything to interfere with the breast milk, with the baby and injection of the baby. We give some hours, probably after breastfeeding, mm -hmm. before we give those uh, medical aids. And then we always advise um, the, the mothers to actually take care of the bodies. And how do they do that? That is um, when, the when the mother is breastfeeding, she can actually go ahead to not just take the hot fluids because the more, f um, the more heat that goes into the body, the more it melts away, you know, some of those things that, you know, let me, I don't want to call the medical names, so I don't <laughs> go into the medical <laughs> jargon, but it just you know, eases the, the flow of the breast milk, the, okay. pi the pipe, the ducts are all flowing and you know, the, the excess milk you know, goes out. So we have hot fluids, we have liquids, okay. not necessarily just the pop. Mm -hmm. you know, they can take juice, they can take a lot of electrolyte drinks, and we have all that. Healthy drinks, beverages would help. Okay, so during, uh, when we're sharing the did you know facts, um, there's this particular one as regards positioning of the woman or of the mother and the child. How can one actually better position? Because of course we know that how the baby is positioned determines how well the baby latches, um, you know, how comfortable the mother is and the baby is and how well the baby also is even breastfed. Um, what are the things that one can begin to do? to ensure that they're better positioned when carrying their babies and feeding? Well, um, thank God for medical science. I believe that um, in this age, in the 21st century, um, we have um, different baby latches that give you the certain centimeters and diameters. Oh, okay. Yes, that mothers can use even in the um, antenatal clinic. Mm. We always um, teach the, the mothers and even sometimes we, we teach the fathers too, <laughs> we, you know, when they come along with their, with their wives and we tell them, well, this is the positioning that the baby ought to be with, um, five centimeters, 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters away from the mother. And then there must be the eye contact, you know, within the baby. Well, uh, basically the, the, the baby ought to be somewhere just below the, uh, just like parallel mm -hmm. to the breast, to the nipple. Um, of course, the nose is above, and then the, the nose is above the knees, the, the nose of the baby is mm -hmm. above the nipple. Yeah, so those are some of those things that, um, that help with the positioning. And of course, also the positioning also helps and aids the way the baby digests. Okay. Yeah, it's food. Yeah, so if the babies are not positioned properly during breastfeeding, you find out that, um, well, babies pop naturally, but then you find out that um, the weight at which they have taken in the breast milk is still the weight at which some of them will actually throw it up 
Ooh. again, yes. So it's very important that um, we position the babies um, properly hmm. when breastfeeding. All right. So now you said something as regards, you know, still on positioning and speaking with fathers. Now, okay, so this is a conversation that we still will be having throughout the week. But now that you've raised father, um, the matter of fathers, how can fathers now help their wives i mean this is in terms of positioning because i've seen videos where um there was a video i saw online where the wife was talking to the husband the husband was like please please this is your jurisdiction no just know how you manage and i've also seen videos where the man doesn't know what to do but he just puts a pillow behind the wife and say okay just sit down maybe this will help how can they assist even though they are not the ones actually doing the breastfeeding well for the husbands we do advise them in the hospital uh, when they come along, we encourage them to help their wives. Well, okay. they can help with massage. A back okay. massage will go a very long way you know, for the woman. They can also help as well to stimulate the breast milk as well by massaging the, uh, the breast of their wives. And they can also help with the positioning. We have um, some of the mothers that actually have um, a bad grooming and sitting okay. and pos uh, posture. So the, the, the husbands can help them at night, you know. When the mother is tired and you know, she wants to sleep, the husbands can help to support, you know, with um, different aids, get a good chair, um, a good sitting chair, get um, an orthopedic bed and um, some other things to make it more comfortable mm. for her to be able to go through. Okay, so we've spoken about latching partially. Can you tell us um, some of the challenges as regards latching? Because we discussed it in the you know segment about the importance of latching, but I mean, I would like to hear from you as a medical practitioner. Well, some of the challenges with latching is that sometimes it just doesn't come easy because um, the posture for the mother would not always be convenient. I think that's the most important time. And you find out that um, most of the time the babies are are prone to always wanting to kick off, you know, move here and move there. And it's you not know, the mother has to keep setting the baby back into, into position, yes. So that's one of the most um, difficult um, trends you find out in latching. Hmm. All right, now moving away from latching and going also still as regards the basics of breastfeeding, what are the reasons why some women actually have now this is but anyway it's still around latching um some women do not realize because there are some times that you hear she went to the hospital and then she she told the doctor that oh i don't understand my child is not growing but i keep positioning the child mouth it seems like the baby's mouth is there but it's not there so how can one notice because she might not know she might think oh they said we should position the baby i've positioned the baby that is it this baby is supposed to be eating and she doesn't realize that the baby is not suckling properly what are the things that she can do to actually notice in case there's any issue as regards that well um for mothers um we do educate them at the antenatal clinic we tell them um when you notice that your baby is not feeding properly you find out that most of the time, the babies are actually, some babies just put their mouth on the nipple, but they are actually not sucking. Mm. So um, most mothers need to be watchful. They need to care about that. And um, another observation that the mother is going to see is that when the baby, there's, there's supposed to be that expression, the baby is supposed to be able to sp sp um, smell the milk, mm -hmm. you know, from a very far distance to know, oh, this is my mother. You know, so the, there's the particular, yes, there's that particular connection. So when, the, when you're not having that connection, then you know there is a problem somewhere else. And uh, you find out that um, the baby could actually be, be sucking, you know. So there are, there are two different things. The baby's mouth could be on the nipple and the baby is not sucking. And the baby could actually be sucking mm -hmm. and still be lacking in nutrients if the mother too is not properly fed. Mm. Yeah. All right. So now still about latching, which is, I mean, <laughs> still feeling. Mm. Some babies cry so much. And then we know that crying, the baby can cry for different reasons. What are the challenges when it comes to um, the mother, uh, a baby crying for like for the child or crying for to um, because of hunger? Now, what are the challenges when the mother doesn't actually give the child the milk at the right time? And does it form a pattern with them? Because we also discussed this earlier. Yeah, yeah, it forms a pattern with with the babies. Um, babies cry when they're hungry. Well, because they don't speak yet. So um, uh, that's a way of communicating. I need something, or uh, my pampas is wet, or you no, know, there's something wrong with my, with my abdomen, you know, so babies cry. So it's, it's left for the mother to be able to mm -hmm. decipher, yes, um, 
what is actually wrong with my baby. So well, there should be feeding times for the baby. And for some babies, they just eat all through, you know, they mm -hmm. eat and they sleep and they eat all through. Okay. So the, the mother can actually get to know that the baby is hungry. The moment the baby begins to move towards her, the baby begins to okay. look towards her, and the baby is coming for the breast all the time. You know, it's absolutely different from when the baby is crying out of a pain in the abdomen because um, the baby doesn't move towards the breast now. You find that most of the baby is just grumpy. Even when you okay. move close, the baby goes away from the breast milk. So the mother is able to tell that, oh, yes, this baby is, is hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now some people might think latching and positioning are the same, even though both are needed. Yeah. Um, I mean, you need to position properly yeah. to, um, to, for the baby to latch. Can you clearly distinguish for, um, for the audience? Yeah. Um, the positioning of the baby is the way the mother actually um, feeds the baby, you know, and um, latching is different. It's actually putting the baby at a particular angle. So they are, they're both synonymous. Mm, okay. They're synonymous, but they're absolutely different. Yeah. All right. So that's now for better clari clarity. Latching is um, how the baby grapples with, um, yeah. with, the, nipples with the nipples for, yeah. for suckling. Yeah. And then positioning is how the baby is actually exactly. um, yeah. aligned Least, yeah. for the breastfeeding process. Exactly. Okay, so now um, what, are, what are signs that the baby has actually eaten well enough? Aside from, because some people say, oh, the baby is already throwing up or burping as you are at the same time. Um, what are the signs to know that, okay, this baby has actually eaten well enough? Well, most of the time when um, babies breastfeed, you find out that by themselves, um, when they're filled up, they take their mouth mm -hmm. away from the nipple. So it's almost synonymous with adults too. Okay. You know, once, you, once you've had your fill, you just, you know, you just drop your spoon. So it's the same thing with babies too. Once they are filled up, even when you place the nipple back in their mouth, you know, they would just, you know, put, turn their mouth away from it. Then you know that they have, um, they have had enough. Yes. Mm. Okay, so um, what are the benefits now as regards um, baby-mother bonding when breastfeeding? Because I know this is one of the concerns when people talk about the fact that ah, if you don't want to breastfeed your child, how are you supposed to bond with the child and how is the child supposed to know you? What are the benefits? Well, this is, uh, I think, one of the most important um, factors, you know, mm. in breastfeeding. Um, breastfeeding actually causes the mother and the baby to bond. And it's not just about the genetics, and it's not just about the hormones, but it goes deep down into um, the psychological process. Um, medically, uh, when mothers are breastfeeding their babies, you find out that there is a connection. There are certain hormones that are being transported right from the mother's brain down into the milk, into the baby. That's why it's easy for uh, a baby to actually identify the mother. Mm. So if you place 20 mothers in a room and um, you place um, even 20 babies, um, it's assured that um, each of them know their mom. will know their mom. Hmm. That's, that's really, really interesting to know that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy yes. because also for the olfactory, yeah. yes, I mean, you also you said the smell and we discussed earlier about the baby being able to identify the mother's breast milk and all of those. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just saying, maybe yeah, that's no, 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 yeah, that, that's, that's um, it. That would also, okay, so now this is my final question. F um, what advice do you have for mothers now, particularly those who are still um, not decided on how well they like maybe breastfeeding their babies or not? Like, what's that thing that you tell them about the benefit and say, okay, please, even if you feel like you're feeling sore or you're feeling pains, this is a great thing for the health of your baby? Well, for mothers that don't like to breastfeed, and yes, we do have quite a lot of them. We have those that actually prefer the breast pump and then they prefer to feed from the bottles. And we have those that probably have the implants and we still tell you, oh, I have a breast implant, I don't want to breastfeed or no, I don't want the baby to bite me. Um, this is the advice. Um, to create a bond, that's one. Two, to help your babies to develop. Three, to increase the mental capacity of your baby. And then four, for the health and the nutrition of your baby to develop, not just as a baby, but even into teen and into adulthood. It will be favorable to you and to you, the mother, too. Uh, my advice is you want to lose weight, breastfeed. You want to stay healthy, breastfeed. Mm. You want your body to be in a proper shape, breastfeed. Mm. 
at the end of it all, you both, you benefit and your baby benefits too. Breastfeeding right. is healthy. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Welcome. Mary Amadu.